All right, great. In this video, we will see how the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator helps us solve statistical problems. Soon enough, you will see that we can easily calculate the mean, variance, and standard deviation of a sample and population. As we did earlier, the best way to learn how to work with the calculator is by solving a hands-on example. Imagine that Company X's stock price experienced returns of 10, 12, and 14 percent over the last three years. What's the stock's average performance and sample standard deviation? Let's see. First, we need to select the calculator's data entry mode by pressing Second Data, which is the second function of key 7. As we mentioned before, it's always a good practice to clear the calculator's memory registers by pressing second, clear work. All right, let's enter the relevant values. The calculator's statistics worksheet performs analysis on one and two variable data. That's why when we scroll down using the up and down keys, we see that the device asks for the values of X and Y. In our example, we have only one variable, Company X's stock returns. In addition, we use historical data. Therefore, we don't need to enter anything for Y. When we perform analysis on one variable data, X represents the value and Y specifies the number of occurrences or frequency. All right, X01 equals 10. One thing we should remember is that we could enter values as decimals or whole numbers. The only limitation is that we have to be consistent. We can't enter 10 for x01 and then 0 0.12 for x02, because the calculator will show an error later on. We scroll down to y01, the first value of y. Its default is 1 and we leave it that way because we use historical data, which does not specify the number of occurrences. Then we enter 12 and 14 for X02 and X03, respectively. All right, now that we have our data stored in the calculator, we need to choose what type of analysis we would like to perform. To do that, we press second stat. The statistics worksheet performs analysis on one and two variable data with four regression models. To toggle between them, we press second set. Let's discuss each of these models in more detail. LIN stands for standard linear regression. LN designates logarithmic regression. EXP is for exponential regression. PWR stands for power regression, and finally, 1-V represents one variable statistics. This is the method we will use for the problem at hand. Once we select it, we press the down arrow to access the statistical analysis of the data. The calculator auto-computes the output, so there is no need to press the CPT button. Let's examine the results. N is the number of observations, which in our case is 3. Then we have X bar, which is the sample mean. It equals 12. This answers the first part of the question. Please notice that the calculator shows X bar and not mu. Why? Because it makes no difference. By definition, both formulas divide the sum of all values by the number of observations. When we scroll further down, we can see SX, which stands for Sample Standard Deviation, and Sigma X, which is the Population Standard Deviation. In our case, SX is equal to 2, and that's the answer to the second part of the problem. Let's continue scrolling down and examine the other variables that the calculator computed. We have the sum of X values and the sum of X squared values. As you can see, the calculator does not provide the population or sample variance directly. 
if we need to obtain sample variances, we must scroll back to the sample standard deviation, SX, and press the X squared key. That's how we find that it equals 4. All right. Now, let's say we would like to predict company X's next year's return. What we have is a table with the firm's three possible returns and their respective probability of occurring. What's the company's mean return and population standard deviation? We'll approach this problem in the same way as we did before. First, we provide the necessary input data by pressing Second Data. As you can see, the calculator remembers the values we entered in our previous task. So we need to clear the memory registers by pressing Second Clear Work. Now we're ready to continue. X01 equals 4. Then we scroll down to Y01. This is the frequency or probability of X01. When we are using this functionality, the calculator doesn't accept anything except whole numbers. So, for example, typing 0.2 will result in an error. So let's type 20 for Y01, and then continue scrolling down to X02, which is equal to 5. Its respective probability, Y02, is 30. Finally, X03 equals 6, while Y03 is 50. All right. Now we can access the results by pressing second stat. Once again, we will perform analysis on one variable data. Let's scroll down to examine the results. N equals 100. In this case, the calculator gives you the sum of all probabilities which should be 1. Since we entered all the y's in whole numbers, the result is 100 instead of 1. This is a very good example of an error trap. Had we made a mistake when entering probability values, the calculator would have shown a value that is different than 100. This would have been a warning sign to go back and check the entered data by pressing second data. In this case, Everything seems to be in order, so we scroll down to X bar, which equals 5.3. This is the weighted average of the three values using the probabilities as weights. Then we scroll down further to the sample deviation, SX, which is equal to 0.785. Then we scroll down further to obtain the population standard deviation, sigma X. As you can see, it is lower because the formula for calculating population standard deviation uses n in the denominator instead of n minus 1. If the problem asks for the population variance, we press the x squared key to obtain it. Voila! Before we finish, let's calculate the covariance and correlation of two variables. The table that you see here provides the returns of two stocks, A and B. We would like to calculate the sample covariance between the two. All right, let's enter the relevant data by pressing second data. But before that, we'll clear the memory registers by pressing second clear work. Now we are good to go. We could enter values as decimals or whole numbers. We opt for the latter choice x01 equals 3, and y01 is 5. This time, we analyze a two-variable data set. Therefore, y no longer specifies the number of occurrences. We use it to enter the relevant values of the second variable. In other words, the stock returns of b. We scroll down further, x02 is 2 and Y02 is 3. In year 3, we have X03 and Y03, which equal minus 6 and minus 7, respectively. The next thing we need to do 
is choose a calculation method by pressing second and stat. As we mentioned, we analyze two variable data. So we hit second set until lin, as of linear regression, appears. Next, we press the down arrow to review the output. Let's see. N stands for the number of paired observations, which is three in our case. Then we have the mean, sample standard deviation, and population standard deviation of x. If we keep scrolling down, we will obtain similar statistics for the y variable as well. Next, we have A, which stands for the linear regression intercept, while B is the linear regression slope. And finally, we are able to find R, the correlation coefficient. The calculator will not tell us directly the covariance between the two stocks. What we could do instead is use the definition of correlation. As we know, it is equal to the covariance between the two variables divided by the product of their standard deviations. So, in order to calculate the covariance, we multiply the correlation by the standard deviations of x and y. As we mentioned before, it's always useful to store any interim results that we can manipulate later instead of writing them down on paper. This saves a lot of time during the exam. So we store the correlation coefficient in register one by pressing store and number one. Then we apply the same approach for the sample standard deviation of x and y. At the end, we press recall one, followed by multiply, then recall two, multiply, and recall three equals to obtain the product of the three values, which is 31.67. Well done, we have come a long way. Now you are able to calculate statistic measures with the Texas Instruments BA2 Plus calculator. Congratulations and keep up the good work.